Yeah, so that's one of the one of the ways to uh, to determine the attitude of the of the satellite. It's understanding where the satellite is pointing with respect to the uh, to the sun. Um, so the, the way our sensor is working is basically simply taking an image. It's a very wide angle image of the uh, of the sky, mm -hmm. and you will have this uh, this bright object in it. So it's about half uh, half a degree uh, in the uh, in the field uh, in the field of view, and that's that's simply where the sun is. So it will in our sensor is going to illuminate um, a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of pixels with different intensity. Uh, and then we have an algorithm looking at the center of this uh, of this bright spot in the uh, in the sensor frame, and so that's determining where the uh, where the sun is. Um, our sensors are actually pretty unique in this uh, in, in this way. So there is uh, another technology that is that is used, which is um, very similar to a pinhole camera. Mm. Uh, and so instead of having a wide uh, array of uh, wide array of uh, of pixels like we like we do, you only have four of these pixels, four photodiodes. Uh, the, the, uh, the light from the sun is going to go to the, pin, uh, to the pinhole, and then depending on uh, where it's shining on the, on the sensor, it will illuminate um, some of these uh, four pixels more than, more than others. So four of these photodiodes are going to be illuminated more than, more than others. Um, it's, it's very good in the sense that it's a very simple design. Uh, it's, it's fairly easy to, uh, to, to build and to, uh, and to align. Um, the problem with those is that typically compared to the sensors that we have, the field of view is much narrower. Uh, so you would need more of these sensors spread around, this, around the spacecraft, depending what else you have in the, in the field of view or where you want to mount them, it can be a bit cumbersome. In our cases, with just two of our sensors, so we, are, we make sure that we always have uh, coverage and we always see the sun uh, somewhere. So that's the, that's the idea. And that's also part of the story of the company, that these students were just looking into a different way of having a, a sun sensor, wondering if that was possible. That's how they came up with this new way of, of, doing, of doing things, and then this new product uh, came up. Um, and, and then you had a question about, about flight heritage, I think. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. yeah. What, um, have, what, uh, what missions have they been on? Yeah, some of them. Yeah, so we've, we've flown on something <laughs> like 20 or 30 different missions with that, uh, with that sensor. Um, so it started in, on two, two, two U um, satellites, two, two kilogram satellites that flew in, uh, in 2014. Where we could uh, we could try these sensors for the uh, for the first time, and uh, we also have the capability of of downloading pictures uh, with uh, with them. Um, we have uh, an Earth sensor that that works in exactly the same way. It's actually the same the same type of camera. There's just some filters that are that are different on there. But then with this wide angle camera, we can actually take a picture of the Earth, black and white picture of the uh, of the Earth, detect the center using the exact same algorithm. Um, and uh, and then with the same design, we have then two two different vectors that we can that we can see the Earth and the Sun, and then determine the attitude thanks to that. And that also allowed us to download some some nice black and white picture of the uh, of the Earth, which is also something that is really exciting because hearing the satellite beeping from from space. I mean, I've I've done it. I have worked on a few spacecraft that are that are up there. It's always cool when we can hear them. Uh, but getting an images from from these satellites when they are orbiting that makes everything much much more concrete right and, and that's also what's super exciting about it yeah you get to see what they see um, yes <laughs> too bad for all the flat earthers <laughs> <laughs> so so okay so you mentioned you can download uh and i'm curious about uploading obviously the algorithm is part of the firmware that's installed uh, on the board, can that be changed or updated if there's a problem or somebody figures out an improvement two years from now? Yeah, so it's okay. uh, it, it takes a bit of work uh, together with the uh, with the satellite integrator to make sure that there is enough bandwidth on the uh, on the uplink uh, so that we can load a new a new image and then there are a few small uh, mechanism that needs to be uh, that need to be in place in order to uh, to safely reprogram the, uh, the the program memory on the on the system but yeah that's something that we can do so there are already a long long list of parameters that can be that can be changed so all the controllers and everything can be tuned um, we can we can change thresholds and and all of this uh, but if needed it's, uh, if a full full software update is required on the uh, on the system for any reason and the mechanisms are uh, are in place that's also something that we can do 
uh, and that we we know is getting more and more requested because hmm. nowadays that's something that people expect uh, to have over the air update of everything they own uh, from phones to uh, to cars and that includes satellites as well so if there is any uh, any issues then we can uh, then we can reprogram these uh, these systems okay and is that something that uh, a person would have to walk into a ground station and upload from there i guess kind of thumb yes. drive or something so, okay i just yeah. i'm just thinking about it like i haven't had my ground station expert on yet to tell me how these things work he's booked but uh, so it's just i'm thinking about it's like oh but well that sounds really good we could just update it yeah well it's not like you're sitting at your computer at your desk and you just tap a few buttons in an app and up it goes you know <laughs> yeah so, so it's so it's whatever system you're using to control your satellite. Mm -hmm. So if you are working with a with a ground segment supplier, or if you have your own ground segment that allows you to operate from your living room, from your from your laptop, and you can upload something to your satellite, it would be a simple comments to say, well, download an image now, or it can be a full new uh, software uh, software image that you that you upload to the satellite. Uh, if you have the mechanisms in place from the start to be able to do that from your living room, then uploading our system, yeah. can, our software can also be done from your living room. Yeah, I get you just have to have good security. <laughs> yes, exactly. More engineers are not going to solve your problem. It's not a technical problem in that sense. It's a process problem. And the time to fix your processes was 20 months ago. And the second best time is today. This is Jason Kanigan, the president of Cold Star Technologies and the host of this podcast, The Cold Star Project, which is all about identifying and solving process problems for space companies, because that's what we do. And you can hear the entirety of this episode by following the link in the comment below.